For decades, the standard perception of Mars has been almost black and white in its simplicity. It is known to be a barren, freeze-dried, and rust-ruddy planet today. However, NASA's Perseverance rover has now confirmed that eons ago, the planet was a warm, wet, and more aquamarine world with rivers, lakes, oceans, and perhaps even life on its surface. Let's look at some of these new findings made by the rover as it continues its journey on the Red Planet. NASA's Perseverance rover isn't just exploring the Red Planet. The life-hunting robot will also help a little bit of Mars make it to Earth a decade or so from now if all goes according to plan. Perseverance, the centerpiece of NASA's $2.7 billion Mars 2020 mission, touched down inside the red planet's Jezero crater on February 18, 2021. The car-sized robot will search for evidence of past microbial life and collect several dozen samples for future return to Earth, among other ambitious tasks. Like its predecessor, the Curiosity, the Perseverance rover was built by engineers and scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Roughly 85% of Perseverance's mass is based on Curiosity's heritage hardware, saving NASA time and money and reducing risk considerably, agency officials have said. Perseverance is about 10 feet long, not including its robotic arm, 9 feet wide, and 7 feet tall. At 2,260 pounds, Perseverance weighs less than a compact car. The rover has a rectangular body, six wheels, a robotic arm, a drill for sampling rocks, cameras, and scientific instruments. But those instruments are quite different from the gear aboard Curiosity because the two rovers have divergent goals. Curiosity's main task involves assessing the habitability of ancient Mars, whereas Perseverance will hunt for evidence of ancient Martians. Perseverance also used the same entry, descent, and landing, or EDL strategy, as its predecessors. It hit the Martian atmosphere at tremendous speeds, deployed a supersonic parachute after friction slowed them down enough, and was finally lowered gently to the red dirt on cables by a rocket-powered sky crane. Perseverance has 23 cameras. Several of them filmed the rover's Mars arrival, capturing its landing in historic and unprecedented detail. Some of these cameras can provide more color and 3D images than other rovers. While the previous rovers have all captured 1 megapixel images in black and white with their engineering cameras, the ones aboard the Perseverance can acquire high-resolution 20 megapixel color images. Their wider field of view means that, instead of spending time taking multiple images to be stitched together on the ground, the new cameras capture the same view in a single snapshot. The cameras also reduce motion blur so they can take photos while the rover is traveling. Perseverance may spot convincing signs of ancient life on the Martian surface, something akin to a fossilized stromatolite here on Earth. That's a tall order for a lonely robot on a faraway world, however, so it's more likely that the rover's life-hunting data will be suggestive at best, mission team members have said. But Perseverance will allow scientists to get much better and more detailed looks at promising samples by kicking off humanity's first ever Mars sample return campaign. The rover will drill at least 20 rock cores and possibly even 30 to 40. This Mars material will be secured in special sample tubes and deposited at select locations for retrieval by a joint NASA-European Space Agency campaign. According to NASA, the belly of the rover houses all the equipment and supplies needed to collect samples. It contains a rotating drill carousel, which is a wheel that contains different kinds of drill bits. While the rover's big arm reaches out and drills rock, the rover belly is home to a small robotic arm that works as a lab assistant to the big arm. The small arm picks up and moves new sample tubes to the drill and transfers filled sample containers into a space where they are sealed and stored. If all goes according to plan, the samples will get to Earth as early as 2031. Scientists around the world will then use powerful instruments to search them for signs of life and clues about Mars' long-ago transition from a relatively warm and wet world to the cold desert planet it is today. Such work will continue for decades. After all, scientists are still studying the moon rocks brought home by NASA's Apollo astronauts half a century ago. The rover is hard at work collecting and studying samples at its landing site in Jezero Crater, 
The crater offers geologically rich terrain, with landforms reaching as far back as 3.6 billion years old. That could potentially answer important questions in planetary evolution and astrobiology. Getting samples from this unique area will revolutionize how we think about Mars and its ability to harbor life. Perseverance has spent the year rolling around the bottom of the crater, making a host of surprising discoveries, one of which is that Jezero's floor is made of igneous rocks. These formed as molten rock cooled and solidified billions of years ago. Some researchers had thought that the crater floor would be made of sedimentary rock, created as wind or water deposit layers of sediment over time. But the rover found a different history for the landscape. Igneous rocks are important because scientists can analyze the radioactive decay of elements inside them to determine how old the rocks are. If and when Perseverance's samples come back to Earth, researchers will be able to date rocks from specific places on the surface of Mars for the first time. Scientists discovered that Jezero's floor wasn't what they expected when the rover began preparing to drill its first sample. Exploring the area's geology, Perseverance ground into a piece of Martian rock to reveal a fresh surface. It looked like an igneous rock on Earth that had salt-rimmed holes in it, holes that had probably formed as water flowed through the rock. That meant the rover was looking at an ancient volcanic rock that had interacted with water, indicating a life-friendly environment such as had never been seen on Mars. But when Perseverance tried to drill a core, the material crumbled and slid out of the sampling device. Because the sampling procedure was automated, the rover ended up with an empty but sealed tube which mission scientists tried to put a positive spin on, labeling it a sample of Mars's atmosphere. A month later, Perseverance successfully drilled its first pair of cores into a similar igneous rock that had been altered by water. This rock formation, called Maz, covers much of Jezero's floor. The rover then drove south and west, skirting a dune-ridden area called Seta, and collected two more pairs of samples. Mission scientists had thought that Seta's rocks would be sedimentary, because visually they seemed to be composed of different layers. But as soon as Perseverance ground away at some of the Seta rocks, another surprise emerged. They too were igneous. Using various instruments to analyze the rock's chemical composition, Perseverance found chunky grains of one mineral, called olivine, encased in another, called pyroxene. These minerals are generally found in igneous rocks or volcanic areas on Earth. That's strong evidence that the Seta rocks formed as a large body of molten rock cooled. Olivine crystals would have formed first and sunk towards the bottom of the cooling magma, and then pyroxene would have formed around them, creating layered rocks that appear sedimentary. The Seta rocks, like the Maz rocks, also show signs of having interacted with water in the past. They might even contain organic molecules, probably produced through non-biological processes such as those seen in some Martian meteorites. Despite the rover's success so far, pressure is mounting for it to get to its next destination to continue sample collection. Perseverance is making its way there now as quickly as possible. Earlier this month, it set a record for long-distance driving on Mars, traveling more than 240 meters in a day. Even so, it probably won't get to the delta for a while. Time is of the essence, because Perseverance has only about one Earth year remaining to meet the timetable for accomplishing its main to-do list. Get to the delta, collect samples there, and drive up onto the crater rim to place them somewhere for pickup. The rover is currently retracing its steps towards its landing site. It will collect another pair of cores from Mars along the way, and then detour around the dune-filled region to reach the delta. Although operations have mostly been smooth, some small glitches have occurred besides the initial failed attempt to collect a rock core. In December, some pebbles fell out during a coring attempt and jammed some of the mechanisms in the rover's sampling equipment. In another incident, surprisingly strong winds kicked dust and small pebbles into several of the rover's wind sensors, damaging them. NASA hopes that the rover will continue to overcome these challenges so we may further learn the history of water on Mars. If you found this video informational, you may also enjoy this one, which looks into what has been found on Mars so far. Do you think life once existed on Mars? Please let us know in the comments below.